fatal misstep of intellectuals is assuming that superior ability within a particular realm can be generalized to superior wisdom or morality overall. Chess grandmasters, musical prodigies, and others who are as remarkable within their respective specialties as intellectuals within theirs seldom make that mistake. Why would it, well, let's take an example. Noam Chomsky, mm -hmm. whom you write about in Intellectuals yeah. in Society, whose work in linguistics, in the first place I can't understand it, but as best I can tell, Everyone who exactly. Everyone who understands his technical work within the field, within his discipline of linguistics, mm -hmm. considers him one of the great figures of the 20th century. Mm -hmm. And his work in politics? Uh, uh, absurdity. The same could be said of uh, Bertrand Russell and his, and his uh, uh, landmark works on, on mathematics and other people in other fields. Uh, but they step outside their field. And uh, when you step outside your level of uh, specialty, sometimes that's like st stepping off a cliff. Well, and you know, trying to denigrate Dr. Fauci probably isn't the best uh, approach. You want the experts to get the airtime, you know, let them talk about, uh, you know, what drug trials have worked, which ones haven't. Don't, you know, uh, mislead people on those things. And, you know, the U.S. CDC is a very capable organization, the best in the world. So the intellectual temptation is to say, look, we already know everything. That's right. If only we also had the power. all the power, yes. everything would be just fine. Yes. And what's wrong with that view? Why isn't that a sensible view? One, they don't know everything. They don't, have, they don't know one-tenth of everything. Uh, in fact, I, I, I argue that they, they probably don't know 1% of the consequential knowledge in a society. Consequential knowledge is a, is a, is a, a concept that runs through this book. Explain that concept. Uh, knowledge whose presence or absence has consequences, serious consequences. I mean, I was once in a plane that was coming down for a landing in the Ithaca airport, uh, and suddenly the pilot gunned the motor and went up again because someone in the control tower had, told, told, had reminded him that he hadn't lowered, lowered his landing gear. Uh, so that was consequential, consequential knowledge, knowledge, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> I was just delighted that that person had, had, had his eyes open and his mind on his work. You get the message about masks to be a, you know, kind of bar bipartisan, let's protect uh, other people uh, type message. And then you engage in the complex discussion about which things it's beneficial to reopen, like, you know, perhaps kids under 15, uh, whereas intellectuals in society, quote, at the heart of the social vision prevalent among contemporary intellectuals is the belief that there are problems and solutions, yes. close quote. Explain that. Well, the, the people with the vision of the anointed, as I call it, believe there are solutions and that intellectuals have the inside track in providing those solutions. Those with the opposite vision understand there are no solutions. There are trade-offs. And, uh, you know, you, you can make this a little bit better by making something a little bit worse. Or you can make it a little bit better by making something a lot worse. And that, right. should you mentioned masks. Should masks be nationally mandated, Bill? Well, the downside to wearing a mask is so low that, I mean, I don't, I can't understand why, you know, it's, it's even a controversy at all. The mask is cheap, it's easy to wear, it has no negative effects. If you're going outside your house, you put on a mask because you'll end up getting close to people. And we know this is not a coughing disease. Just talking uh, can expel the virus. You know what's best for your health. Therefore, we must make the decision in a bureaucracy in Washington. That's right. How? I, <laughs> well, it, if you've been told all your life, and, and many of these people have, from an early age, they, they were in the class for bright, gifted children. They were the ones who got into the good high schools. They were the ones who were accepted in colleges that accept uh, less than 10% of the applicants. Uh, uh, they've heard this all through their lives. And after a while, they must, in all due modesty, uh, believe it. We should be able to manufacture a lot of vaccines. And, and that vaccine, a uh, key goal is to stop the transmission, to get the immunity levels up so that you get almost no, almost no uh, infection going on whatsoever. But finally, we see none other than Mr. Gates admitting what we were saying since 2020 and got censored for. And there's no way to censor this because it's the words of Mr. Gates himself and the comedian Jimmy Dore is simply commenting on what he says. But here we go. 
And then at that point, we didn't really understand the fatality rate. You know, we didn't understand that it's a fairly low fatality rate and that it's a disease mainly of the elderly, kind of like flu is, although a bit different than track record. I remember years ago encountering a, a fellow who had been a teaching a, a, a fellow at Harvard when I was an undergraduate. And I said to him, uh, I've been noticing that whenever there's a great disaster, there always seems to be a Harvard man in the middle of it. He, he, he said, have you noticed that too? <laughs> Bill Gates is one of the world's richest men. His ability in software, however, does not translate into a self-appointed role as a leader of the pandemic response. As Sol points out, he has literally walked off a cliff intellectually as everything he says here is wrong. From his faith in Dr. Fauci and the CDC, to his sole focus on vaccines, to his cavalier attitude on the shutdown of society, human relations are not computer code, and Bill Gates does not understand 1% of 1% of what makes a society function. He most clearly demonstrates this with his comments on masking. Forcing people to mask up was not a trivial thing. Aside from the fact that they don't work, taking away the ability to express emotions is dehumanizing. Masks contributed to a pandemic of depression and have had a profoundly negative effect on children. Worse, they extended the pandemic, really a pan panic, by keeping people in a state of fear. This sowed the seeds for the dystopian horrors that followed, from vaccine mandates to the scapegoating of the unvaccinated. The virus, no worse than a bad flu, as Gates now admits, was not unprecedented. What was, was a leadership class, which includes Mr. Gates, who seemingly abandoned reason for madness, creating the mass delusion we've all been living under for the last two years. Currently, I am writing a book which is going to explore how this COVID mass psychosis was created by leaders like Mr. Gates over the last two years. It will explain how this happened, why it happened, and what needs to be done so that it never happens again. Further, it will also give you the tools to wake up the people in your own life who still suffer from this delusion. If this interests you, I could use your help. I want this book to be the best out there and I could use some feedback. Click the link below and I will send you a rough draft of the first three chapters. Thank you in advance for any help you can give. Each in our own way, we must educate ourselves and do all we can to ensure that the dystopia we've experienced over the last two years is never repeated again.